Broke for your hole, broke for your show, broke for your hole, broke for your show, broke for your hole, broke for your hole, but I shim your show, but I shim, recover for dash, double answer the apostles and the elders of Great Mills, don't you well? Want to say salutations to all for the elect out there, man. You are kept us a dark and that do this thing in the end, most truth and sincerity. I appreciate you, man. This week's title is going to be entitled, uh, this week's topic is going to be entitled, um, Lifting Himself Up in His Brigadine. All right. Who's lifting himself up in his brigadine? The so called uh, white man in the form of the United States Empire and these other uh, nations that's run by Esau. All right. Esau, by the way, is the so called white man today. And the inspiration for the show comes from <coughs> Defense Updates just put up a, a recent video Six Reasons Why No Nation Would Dare Mess with the U.S. Navy. Right. And Pretty much, you can watch that video on your own defense updates. Always tell brothers to subscribe to it, and it's just a channel that updates you on all the different military um, equipment that these different countries are working with. And it also gets into war tensions and these types of things. And <clears throat> the United States military is um, massive. It is the number one military in the world, all right? And that's just lifting up their pride. You know, that's why the scripture says he boasts in, in his brigadine. A brigadine is pretty much an, a coat of mail that you would wear. Armor, you know, things to use to protect yourself. The modern day version version of that is, uh, you know, surface to air missile defense system, air to air missile defense system, sea to air missile defense systems. Um, just different um, ways to protect yourself militarily. The, they have the F-22 Raptor, only different Predator Jones. Um, second to Russia, nuclear stockpiles. At least on record, we don't know how much each nation truly has. So this is what the so-called white man boasts himself in it. So much that he's going to actually be the first nation ever to actually fight against the Most High directly, the Most High and His Son. Because the Most High blessed them with this with this technology. Because the book of um, Ecclesiastes, the first ch chapter, tells us, the prologue at the latter end of it, that all wisdom coming from the Most High. So... The wisdom that this so-called white man has is really left-handed wisdom, and it was given to him by the Heavenly Father. Ezekiel goes on, prophetically speaking, in the 28th chapter, to, to say that he's even wiser than Daniel, all right? Now, I'll tell you what, he might have more wisdom than Daniel, but not any. But Daniel has more understanding, because Daniel understands, look, Daniel can't break, you know, you put a nuclear missile and, and tell Daniel, look, take it apart, he's not going to know how to do that. You know, he's a very wise prophet, but he's not going to know how to do it. He doesn't have that wisdom, but he has more understanding than the so-called white man because he understands, look, you don't fuck with the Most High. You don't box with the sun. But the so-called white man, he just doesn't understand that. You know what I'm saying? He just, the Most High didn't put that understanding in him. But the Most High did, however, put in him was great pride. You know, great pride to boast in his works, to look at these um, uh, military advance, uh, advancements that they got, the United States um, uh, Empire, and military to think that nothing in this world could stop them you know what i mean I'm, and i'm talking about military uh stuff that's you know that we would be considered sci-fi laser beams and, and anti-matter guns things that you would probably see in a sci-fi movie they actually have all right they have guns that you know you could turn the corner and it could shoot bullet, bullets on the corner all right so you have mainstream military weapons which also have secretive weapons and all and i feel that the so-called so white man has been given uh, some weapon that, you know, is out there, that's out of this world that we don't even know about, that nobody really knows about to make him think he has a chance, and the Most High gave it to him. And the son, all right, Yahweh Shai in the form of Isaac blessed him when you read in the book of Genesis, the 27th chapter, you know, with the fatness of the earth, of course, and, the, and his blessing being that sword. A sword is just an instrument of destruction, all right? doesn't mean uh, a blade necessarily, all right? It's any means of destruction because... The so-called white man's means of destruction doesn't just stop at uh, military. Of course, you have pestilence in the form of these different uh, viruses that they create and control in the CDC. Um, they have weather manipulation. Now, certain people don't believe that the HARP program is used to uh, manipulate earthquakes because it's damn near impossible to move to atomic plates. So that part could be BS, you know? That part could definitely be BS, but guess what? We don't know for sure, man. We don't know for sure. All right? Let's say the heart program, I mean, moving tectonic plates is like, come on, you know, far-fetched. But 
we don't know what this man do. He, he, he could, you, you know, what he could do. He could create um, things that could simulate earthquakes. Now he doesn't have to necessarily move tectonic plates, right? He could do things that simulate earthquakes, and they show you that in the movie. Um, uh, what was that Ocean's Eleven when they were robbing the bank? They simulated an earthquake, so he could simulate earthquakes to cause um, mass hysteria, causing a, a major evacuation, and then execute whatever plan he has to execute. So there's different uh, cunning devices that the so-called white man has. All right, but if uh, for, uh, First Corinthians two and eleven, we're not ignorant of it. All right, and the Most High ultimately reveals all the secrets to the servants of Prophet. So one way or another, we're going to be able to bump across videos or pursuant to the Book of Psalm sixty four and eight. They're going to tell on themselves, and the brother's going to come across it and do a lesson on it. Um, the Book of Luke, the twelfth chapter, the second verse tells us that there's nothing um, that's going to remain hidden. All right, eventually the Most High is, is going to shine a light on everything. And, and, and reveal it, all right? And the Most High is shining the light now in his people in the form of the prophets because the scriptures tell you in the book of Zephaniah that, you know, that he was going to put candles in the midst of Jerusalem. And who's the candles? Well, when you read the Matthew, the fifth chapter, it tells us that we're the light of the world. And that word there for world is kainos, uh, no, pardon me, cosmos, all right? So we are a light to the rest of the nation of Israel, the prophets, some of the apostles, the elders, all the brothers that's doing this video, all right? And that main flashlight we use is these scriptures, man, all right? You open up these scriptures and you go on a prophecy and, you know, expose this devil, all right? Letting them know that his downfall is coming no matter what uh, technologically advanced military uh, machine you have, all right? You're not out the realm of the Most High's prophecies, man, because pursuant to the book of Isaiah, the 14th chapter, the 24th verse, it tells us, man, everything that the Most High has spoken shall come to pass, all right? There's nothing that the Most High said in the scriptures that's going to be negated, all right? That right there should prove that there's no free will, all right? Because if there was free will, then you could throw off prophecy, but no, all right? The Most High, as it says in the book of Isaiah, he declared the end from the beginning. So from Genesis to Revelation, everything has been pre predetermined, all right? We're just playing out the movie. The movie's already been set, okay? So though you have this military, which you spend $750 billion, close to $800 billion on, and you're lacking onto an iron sword, and the other nations before were lacking onto a, 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 a more royal metal, such as gold and silver and bronze, all right? But weaker in, 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 in military, because an iron sword would cut through a, a, a gold or bronze or silver sword. However, iron is not as decadent as gold, right? So these previous empires, they were more plush, more royal, more splendors, all right? America's a shithole, but the American military is, I mean, it makes up 64% of the world's military. It is very massive, all right? It is very powerful, okay? But that's nothing to the most high, okay? Because guess what? All other nations before America were very great. All these other empires were very powerful, man. The Persian Empire expanded what? Um, 127 provinces. All right, that's all like 127 states, three times the size of the United States. You had the Roman Empire that was enormous. You had you had other empires that were enormous. Now, does the does the American Empire just stops with the 52 with the 50 states? Well, no, it doesn't because you have vassal states. All right, what I mean by vassal states, you have um, different countries and states all throughout the the world that acts as puppets, all right, for the United States, all right? They act as puppets. I mean, you know, they put puppet leaders in there and they don't outright say like this person is working for the United States or this person is a vassal, but guess what? They're getting aid from the United States, okay? And um, at any time, the United States could cut them off from eating, right? Put sanctions on them. So they have to submit themselves, all right? So this is the, this is the modern day way of um, doing a siege and invading a country and putting up vassalage you know, you use sanctions, all right, you stage coups, but these different uh, geopolitical things that we see now happened back then, okay? But what? It doesn't matter because even if you expand, the Mosai has a bound for each particular kingdom that you cannot pass. And the so-called white men, the elites amongst them, know that their time is short, man, all right? They know that the hourglass is ticking, so they're trying to, you know, do what they can to do either delay it or or stay in power or come up with a way to fight against the heavenly father and his son when he comes back and you can't man all right i mean you will 
Second Ezra is the 13th chapter. They were afraid, but the scripture says, yet yeah, there's fight. That's how come the Mosai has to put the spirit on them to fight anyways, because according to the law of war in the book of Deuteronomy 20th chapter, if a nation was to submit itself, they would only have to pay tribute, but the Mosai does not want to go down like that, all right? All right? You, you know, you, you go to a city and you tell them, look, you can, you can fall down, you can either get down or lay down pretty much. If they choose, look, we're going to lay down, then you have to pay tribute. All right, but they, if they wasn't winning, then by the law, you know, you can go ahead and seize that city, right? Now, what's that great city that's going to be seized and destroyed by our Lord? America, man. America. And as the Apostle of Rhyme was bringing out what Apostle of Tahar said, a city is only as great as its population. So America can be considered a great city, all right, because it has a great population. It's technically a great city, a huge city, man, all right? That's going to get seized and destroyed, all right? Wiped off the face of the map. Okay? In thermal and nuclear destruction and concentrated fire from the laser beam. Just a whole bunch of fire on this place, man. To cleanse this shit. And after this place is wiped off the face of the map, these our ruling class Edomites from these other different nations, such as Russia and Europe and you know what have you, okay, are gonna get theirs and submit themselves, man. Okay, and this is the way things shall be played out. So we don't give two rats ass about how great your military is, man. All right? No matter how great that military is, you can't escape prophecy. All right, so with that, I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rukakodash, the belongings of the apostles and the elders of the great most ultra well, and salutations to hopeful elect out there, you are came to the do this thing in the utmost truth and sincerity. Shalom.